Hey yo fellow pretzels, it's me, Earphone Pretzel. So some time ago, I wanted to challenge myself to see how far I could go in Miitopia for Nintendo Switch within 100 in-game days. In case you don't remember, or just haven't seen the first video yet, which I'd recommend watching before this one, Miitopia is an RPG which goes on a level by level structure. And during each level, something you will quickly pick up on is the sky transitioning from day to night, showing time passing by in the world. The goal of each level is to reach the end at the end of the stage, where your team rests up for the night and recovers from any damage taken during battles. There will be occasional levels where your team is unable to make it to the end when night falls, which will mean the team will camp out for the night and the level will transition into the next day. I asked my community tab how much further I should go into this run, in which a majority of the votes said they would like to see me do another 100 days, and that's what we're going to be doing in this video. To recap on how far we made it within the first 100 days, we went from the beginning of Greenhorn to beginning to rebuild the team in Karkatan. Will these next 100 days be enough for me to reach the end of the main story? Let's find out. So in the first video, I accidentally made the mistake of counting day 40 twice, meaning I technically spent 101 days in Metopia in the first video. But to reiterate what happened on day 101, we got Mage Jaden animations back onto the team, and the level for what I can remember was pretty uneventful. Day 102 started with a Quizmaster game, which was pretty straightforward, and then during the level, I encountered the last boss we could find in Karkata Descent, the Burning Eshot Bag Golem, which, despite every member of my team hitting pretty hard, this boss did give me a bit of trouble, considering the fact Jaden died twice in this battle, but nevertheless, we managed to win the battle, and on day 103, Eshot Bag rejoins the team, and now that I had a team of four again, I decided now would be a good time to take on the stationary blue minotaurs on the map. Which... Yeah, I won, but holy shit, this was a close battle. Winning that fight leads me to the roaming gourmet, who kindly gave me a few slices of pizza for reaching him, and after that, the battles in the following level were pretty simple. I wiped out a couple of imps, which Jaden wasn't too happy about, because... I might have started another quarrel with Jaden because I figured Human Cannonball would be my best damage dealer when I was fighting the Minotaurs. I then scored some game tickets and wiped out a couple of Hobgoblins before reaching the inn. And at the end of the level, I was now given the option to freely change the jobs of my party members at any time, meaning I can now change my me back to the Warrior. As much as I like the tank for its funny move pool and the best walking animation in the game, I'd rather stick with a job for this challenge that doesn't start quarrels often. On day 104, I made my first encounter with the gold butterflies and the dark griffin in the level. And while the butterflies were pushovers, I wanted to get rid of the dark griffin first, since unlike the original griffins, these ones could drain MP from party members. After I won the battle, Blaze grew a level, and we reached the inn. Then on day 105, I make my way into Karkaton Volcano, and begin by battling a couple of familiar faces, and then getting introduced to one of my favourite enemies in the entire game, the creatively named monster, Bomb. Why is this one of my favourites? Simple. Big Boom. Which can also be useful for wiping out other enemies standing beside it. Then on day 106, I was introduced to one of the reoccurring events I did not encounter at all in the first video. A large pile of boulders falls down from the sky and essentially cuts the team in half. Meaning for the next couple of stages, I will unfortunately be progressing with a team of only two me's. And just like the other events in this game, such as outings and camping, this essentially uses up an entire day, and since this is the first time I've seen it throughout the run, I was expected to see it happen again, at least a few more times throughout the rest of this journey. Day 107 consisted of the first half of the team, being me and Blaze, and also the Great Sage and the Horse. Yeah, sucks to be jaded in the eShot bag, considering me and Blaze get help from both these reliable allies, but these two just have to progress on their own, without any additional help. I encountered the Burning Mummy for the first time during this stage, which honestly didn't really matter because as long as you kill the bomb enemy first, the damage from the bomb's explosion does more than enough damage to take down the enemies standing beside it. I then scored an MP candy from a chest and ended the stage with a jump scare. Day 108 started with another battle against a Hobgoblin and a Burning Mummy, and funnily enough, the very next battle was the exact same pair of enemies. The only major difference from this fight compared to the first one was Blaze finished off the enemy with a standard punch. Nothing happened on day 109. All that happened was, the other half of the team decides to begin making progress and try to regroup with me and Blaze. And just like when the team first got separated, this essentially wastes a day. So, on to day 110. 
Day 110 began the journey to regroup with me and Blaze, and considering I didn't have the help of the Great Sage or the Horse, the following battle was definitely not as easy as the ones I fought with me and Blaze. I actually had to use my Life Sprinkle to get Eshot Bag back up during this fight. The good news though was, this battle got me up to 550 rescues, which at the end of the level, scored me another upgrade to my HP Sprinkles and improved the safe spot. And thankfully, this was the only stage I had to do with just this pair. So on day 111, the team regrouped, and then on day 112, I encountered the next boss, which had three of my party members' faces on it, Cerberus. This battle also now grants us the ability to use Hyper Sprinkles on party members, which I immediately used on both myself and Blaze. Spoiler alert, these sprinkles are a bit broken, and they can also stack with other effects like showing off or lending a hand. Unfortunately though, Cerberus can nullify the effect because he can inflict the Nightmare effect on party members, which forces me to put them in the safe spot for a turn before I can use another Hyper Sprinkle on them. After 5 Hyper Sprinkles, a ton of safe spot switching, and some additional healing from Sayori, I managed to win the battle and rescue Seb Toot, Baldi, and <coughs> added them back onto the team and concluding the day with a farewell from the Great Sage. On day 113, I decided that my team should be the party members I just got back, so I could try and catch them up with everyone else. And before I left the volcano, I noticed some tasty snurps on the map, which I quickly dealt with, and sadly, both my drops were both the common radishes. But hey, at least this didn't cost me an entire day. As for the first day in Carcass and Peak, it was only one fight which ended quickly with the use of Unstable Formula and Rapidash. And also, Steve was here, who gave me some information that I just quickly skimmed over. I wasn't taking any alternate routes. My sights were on the Dark Lord's castle. I started Day 14 by winning the Pirate Gear on the Roulette Wheel for Baldi. After I won the first one, I won it again to see how much gold I would get by selling it. And I came to the decision that this amount of gold was not enough to use my game tickets on. I did run into a battle against three bomb enemies at the end of the stage, but as we've already established, all we really need to do here is just kill one of them, and the rest of them will die alongside. Seb2 and I all gained a level each throughout the stage, and we all got some new moves. I started day 115 by winning the crystal flask on the roulette wheel, and after seeing how much gold this item sells for, I chose to stick around and use up my game tickets here to score myself a good amount of gold. I started the day with 6,500 gold and acquired upgrades for 4 of my party members, in which mine was a dud because who else would it be? These upgrades took me down to 3,500 gold. Once I used all my game tickets here, I went from 3,000 to nearly 15,000. Sweet! And to add on top of that, the Quizmaster also gave me an additional 3 game tickets after winning a round of me parade. So one thing is for sure, if I can restock my game tickets moving forward, I can pull off this get rich quick scheme again, which I had a feeling I was going to need to do because upgrades later on get pretty expensive. Then the team stopped to camp out for the night. Yeah, we didn't get into a single battle this entire day, and yet I still found a way to take damage before the day was out. On day 116, I scored myself some HP bananas from a chest, and then in the following battle against two dark griffins, Seb2 tried to spare one of them, which wasn't the best idea. So I ended the fight in a quarrel with Seb Toot, which I soon found out wasn't going to get resolved immediately, because on day 117, I entered the Dark Lord's castle, and the team got separated by a rockfall again, and Mimey is not with Seb Toot, so... Shit. Day 118 started with me giving half my team some food for additional stat boosts, before heading into the first level of the Dark Lord's castle. My first battle was against a group of imps, in which I decided to begin the battle off with trying to protect my team members. I was able to use Rapidash the next turn, which allowed me to do big damage to the clever imp, which then proceeded to finish off. And then we had to fight two more of them immediately after. So I proceeded to heal up my team, use Rapidash whenever he decided he wants to attack, and just like the first battle, and I managed to finish both of them off, concluding day 118. Then on day 119, it was time for the first boss in the castle, the Cynthia Demon, which started off in kind of a nerve-wracking way to me, considering how much damage the enemies did in one round. For context, the Cynthia Demon gets to attack three times per round, and the Naughty Imps get to attack twice each per round, meaning my team gets hit a total of seven times per round. This kind of stuff is why I focus on the standard enemies first before focusing on the boss, and even after I killed both of the Naughty Imps, this fight was still a bit of a challenge. I did eventually have to use my Life Sprinkle on Eshot Bag in the middle of the fight, but then immediately after reviving Eshot Bag, Cynthia did just enough damage to knock out 
and I now have no way to revive him. Thankfully, Rabidash decided to help a bit more frequently for the rest of the battle, and speaking of which, how is it decided when the horse will come in and do an attack? Is it percentage based, or some fact that I'm not aware of? Miitopia modders slash enthusiasts? Let me know in the comments below, because I'm stumped. Eshot bag, Blaze and each gain the level after beating the boss, and Cynthia rejoins the team, ending day 119. On day 120, the other half of the team began their journey to regroup with the others. So just like the last time where the team got separated, it looks like we're going straight into day 121, which definitely did not start well. Because this being got to attack a grand total of three times throughout this entire fight. If Hyper Sprinkles were not a thing in this game, I definitely would have lost this battle. After that though, there was nothing left to worry about for the rest of the stage. I managed to avoid getting into another battle and found myself another game ticket before reaching the inn. On day 122, my next level was split into two paths. I decided to go down the right path, which immediately started with a trapped treasure chest. The Banshee Vols were easy to take care of, but for some reason, Seb2 tried to spare the Dark Griffin again, which, just like last time, did not do any favours. Jaden then proceeded to finish it off, winning the battle, and the next chest I found contained 1800 gold, which I then proceeded to use immediately at the start of day 123. I then fought the next boss, being the Study of Crystal, which, side note, I know this is essentially like the Dancing Guide painting boss that I fought in the previous video, but why does the team stop here to admire the painting when it's literally based on the Dark Lord? You know, the guy they are literally going after right now. I came so close to winning this battle, but near the very end of it, I made, quite possibly, the most idiotic play I will ever make in this game. After Seb2 and Jaden got taken down, I healed and used a Hyper Sprinkle on Bolly out of desperation, and I somehow did not notice the fact that I still had my Life Sprinkle, and that single mistake costing me the win here. I did manage to win the battle the next day and add Crystal back onto the team, but I don't think I'm ever going to live that first attempt down. Both teams regrouped on day 125, and then day 126 began with a familiar decision to what I ran into recently. I decided to go down the right path again, which started with me getting some more gold from another chest, and the following battle served as a reminder that I'm still in a quarrel with Seb Toot, which he then finally decided to put an end to by using Love and Peace. After taking down the first Silver Cobra, Seb Toot then gave me an additional turn, which allowed me to take down the second one, winning me the battle and completing the stage. After my first battle on day 127, just like near the end of the first video, I soon realized going down this path was not a good idea. Because for one, Cynthia fell down a hole, which by itself sucks. But most of the time, I still feel like I can manage a level with a team of three. The following battle with the gold butterflies and silver cobra was not a problem, but then the very next battle was two fiends again and despite the fact i used hyper sprinkles to try and take down both fiends with just one hit each i did manage to take down one but then the other one targeted me after i used my life sprinkle on seb toot although in retrospect i probably should have put my character in the safe spot after he took down the first one because then i definitely would have won this battle i tried the level again the next day and this time I did manage to get past both the fiends and reach 600 rescues, scoring me another HP and MP sprinkles upgrade at the end of the level. And then on day 129, it was time to fight the last teammate boss, the Monitorama. And this battle, I kid you not, lasted about 8 minutes. And the reason for that is because this boss has the ability to call in additional sword and shield allies after I kill one. And plus, most of the time, the other party members were just not bothering to attack the boss itself. After I got the prey status for killing the spirit sword, followed by Cynthia lowering the boss's defenses with sweet whispers, I just put all of my focus on the boss itself, knowing that this is where I can inflict the most amount of damage onto it. But of course, just moments before I finally beat the boss, it summons one last sword and shield enemy for us to take care of. After making quick work out of them, me, Crystal and Ooh. all gain a level each, and Monitor rejoins the team, meaning I have now gotten every party member from this adventure back onto the team. And after I reached the end, I found out I consumed enough HP bananas and MP candies, enhancing both their effects once again. Now that I have everyone back on the team, I started off day 130 by giving food to all my party members, mainly for whatever stat each character would benefit from the most. The first stage in the castle corridor introduced me to the flaming wind enemies, which also introduces another condition that enemies can inflict on party members 
being that these guys can set party members on fire, but with every condition that enemies in the game can inflict on your team, just put them in the safe spot and you'll be good the next turn. We did get into another battle with one later on in the level, alongside a blue minotaur, which, after using a couple of hyper sprinkles, wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. And the following battle against 8 gold butterflies helped replenish my gold count a bit. Now that I have everyone back, upgrade requests are going to be a lot more frequent now, meaning I likely won't be able to chip in for everyone on certain days. Day 131 was more of the same. I took down a couple more flaming wind enemies and another minotaur, which, just like last time, I proceeded to use a couple hyper sprinkles to finish off the battle quickly. Then came day 132, which was my battle against the dragon boss, which I immediately used a hyper sprinkle on myself for, and then immediately again after the first one wore off. As you can probably assume, the hyper sprinkles essentially carried me throughout this battle. There was only one turn where I had to put my character in the safe spot to get rid of the fear condition the dragon inflicted on him, but that was really one of the only main issues I faced during this fight. The other being Bolly couldn't be revived for like two turns. After I won the battle, I scored myself some more gold from a chest and reached the inn. Day 133 started off in a pretty rough way. My cleric monitor fell down a hole at the beginning of the level, meaning my main supporter can't help us throughout the stage. And our first fight is with none other than a fiend, which, unlike all the other ones we faced so far, this one is unavoidable. So what I did to get past this one was put my character in the safe spot take them out after the fiend used its turn, give my character another hyper sprinkle, and then proceed to take down the fiend in just one hit. The flaming winds that came right after were also a bit concerning to deal with, considering how often they inflicted burns on my party members. Although, this battle was like, the one time where an enemy actually accepted Sebtoot's mercy and got away. How's that for a plot twist? After that though, Sebtoot and I managed to take care of the remaining two flaming winds, no problem. Day 134 began with a quick fight against two Dark Griffins. This battle also marked the first time Monitor successfully landed the move Righteous Anger, which instantly KOs an enemy if the move is successful. I think that was enough to make the second Dark Griffin run away from us, considering this one also accepted Sebtoot's mercy. Our next fight was with two Minotaurs, which you already know how this goes by now. Hyper Sprinkle, then dead. Score some more game tickets from a chest, and then reach the inn. Simple. And then, on day 135, it was finally time. Time to battle the Dark Lord himself. Time to use all the tricks I've been applying throughout this adventure. Nope, scratch that. He can inflict the nightmare condition on my team, cancelling out the hyper effect. Thankfully, Cynthia lowered the Dark Lord's defenses the same turn, so I immediately used another hyper sprinkle on my character after the nightmare wore off. I think the Dark Lord was taking note of my battle strategy here, or really, lack of a strategy, because as soon as the second phase of the battle began, the two phases he gave to his imp servants were Cynthia's and mine. So, looks like there was only one thing left to do. If I can't use a hyper sprinkle on myself, then I shall use them on someone else. I managed to get Cynthia's face back pretty quickly, thanks to the fact money to got a hit on her, as she was covering for the Dark Lord. Yeah, I'm no longer taking this guy seriously. The guy had multiple instances of being able to finish off the MC throughout this journey, but chose not to, and now, he's cowering in fear in this battle? I don't think I need to add anything else onto that. That's just stupid. I got my face back shortly after reclaiming Cynthia's, and then, a couple turns later, another wave of imp servants was called in, meaning my team was essentially going to be cut in half again, this time taking money to his face, and surprisingly, Cynthia's again. I only had one hyper sprinkle left at this point in the battle, and considering Sebtoot's normal attack hits all enemies, I decided to give it to him and have my character attack just one of them, starting with Monita in order to get our main support back, then followed by Cynthia immediately after. Then after Sebtoot's hyper effect wore off, the Dark Lord proceeds to fully wipe clean all of Monita's HP, knocking her out and causing my character to become enraged, finishing off the Dark Lord once and for all. But if you know anything about Metopia, then you know that this is not the end of the adventure. Where one enemy falls, a new arises. Our foe and adversary, Darker Lord Sayori, has arrived. And now she's gone. But with the help of the dragon, our quest to track her down begins now. Day 136 finds us now entering the Traveler's Hub, where I can now accept missions from other characters and open up more of the world. I started off by talking to Pearl, the Disco Cleric, who is concerned about a rampaging abominable snowman in Powdered Peaks. 
I agree to help her fight it off, and so I head off to Powder Peaks for the first time in this adventure. Halfway through the day, a quarrel started between me and Cynthia, in which Seb2 tried to clear up in the following battle. He managed to end Cynthia's beef with me, but unfortunately I ended the battle before he could end my beef with Cynthia. I reached 650 rescues during the level, so I scored myself some more HP sprinkles after reaching the inn. On day 137, I was now given access to the catalogue, which allows me to purchase any weapon or armour I previously acquired throughout the adventure at any time. The day began with Crystal falling down a hole, and our first encounter with the snowman enemies, which we took down not a moment too soon. Baldi and Eshot Bag both gained a level throughout the stage, and at the very end, we found three more game tickets and a chest. And after reaching the inn, I was presented with an emergency. Blaze became sick and cannot be put back onto the team until she recovers. Unlike the Rockfall event, which splits the entire party into two halves, this one thankfully doesn't use up an entire day, but the main problem is, it's entirely random on who falls ill at the end of the stage. And while I did know I will eventually get to use Blaze again later on, for the longest time, I was under the impression that Mii's getting over their sickness was also decided randomly. Turns out that's not the case, and after doing a bit of research, aside from Mii events, which can help speed up a Mii's recovery, what you need to help a party member get over sickness is EXP, either from battles or the roulette wheel, which luckily for me, the roulette wheel that day had really good chances of giving me a giant helping of EXP, which rewarded me with a lot more than enough XP to help Blaze recover, which I should also add, even if you do get enough XP through the use of the roulette wheel, sick me's will remain sick until the next time you enter an inn. I then won some additional HP bananas from the Quizmaster, and another quick battle later, it was then time to camp out for the night and wish upon a star. Day 139 started with a battle against a couple of familiar foes and an Ice Maiden, which, thanks to Rabidash, was over before we knew it. I grew to level 16 and scored another game ticket from a chest. Then day 140 began with Blaze feeling better, meaning we can now put her back on the team. I then proceeded to buy Crystal a bit of irony before entering the next level, where the abominable snowman boss is located. Rabdash chipped in to help pretty frequently throughout this battle, which also allowed me to use my first horseplay attack of the adventure. And also, Pearl helped keep my team healthy throughout the battle, which was a major help. Despite how much damage the boss was doing to all of my party members, those two factors made this battle not as bad as it probably would have been otherwise. Seb2, Crystal and Ooh. all gained a level each, and we ended the stage by collecting a reward from Pearl, meaning on day 141, it was time to head back to the Travelers Hub and begin our next mission, which takes us to Elder Chef, who wants to go to Peculiar to try some hamburgers. Are burger stands and fast food restaurants just not a thing in Metopia? Ugh, never mind. Our first day in Peculiar was very straightforward, only introducing a couple more new foes we will be encountering while we are here. We did run into a trapped chest at the end of the stage, continuing a running nose enemy, which... Day 142 presented me with three paths to go down, all leading to different rewards at the end of the level. I went down the clothes path to score a free armor upgrade for one of my party members, which, after winning the following battles against a couple of peach jellies, running noses, and slices of bread, rewarded me with a leather costume for Cynthia, which I immediately equipped. Day 143 began with me entering the forest area of Peculiar. Before coming here, I decided to look at a map of Peculiar and determine which wops on the map would lead me to the boss battle the quickest. A quarrel started between Jaden and Monita halfway through the day, and well, at least their current beef with each other helped out quite a bit in the following battle. I put them both in the same room at the start of day 144, and the next level had me entering the desert area. Aside from Baldi sitting on a cactus, the day was pretty uneventful overall. My me gained a level and learned Double Slash. Day 145 started with another Quizmaster game, which after winning, I left the desert area and arrived at my destination, which meant it was time to fight the Hamburger. I managed to get the praise effect at the start of the battle after killing both of the bread enemies, which, while that was a good thing, the Hamburger could still nullify it by swallowing my me, which, the good news is, that did not happen, but the bad news is, instead, it actually took down Monita at full health meaning I had to use my life sprinkle at the very start of the battle, which I also followed up with a hyper sprinkle on Blaze. After everyone had another turn, the hamburger chose to actually swallow up one of my party members, and of course, it had to be Blaze. But it actually wasn't that big of a deal, because my me still had the prey status, which carried me for the rest of the fight, allowing me to rescue Blaze and beat the boss. I then collected my reward from L, and once again, rejected this messed up piece of sh cameraman.
Day 146 began with Monitor and Jaden's quarrel coming to an end. I then met up with Miku the mage in the hub, who tells me that a friend of hers may know something about Dark Lord Sayori, which now takes me up to the futuristic metropolis in the sky, the land of Nimbus, home to a selection of newly introduced robot enemies, and grass growing on clouds. And there's a kitten inside this grass. Let's not question this. Day 147 was another uneventful day. Just like on the previous day, it was just one quick battle, which was enough to level up Eshot Bag, allowing him to learn pro cooking, and that battle got me to 700 rescues, meaning more HP and MP sprinkles after beating the stage. Day 148 started with me winning some candies from the Quizmaster once again, and the level gave me the choice of monsters or bananas. I chose to take the monster route, and while the first two battles were pretty easy, the lizard man at the end of the stage managed to put up a good fight, but we managed to pull through, and Blaze grew to level 16. Then on day 149, Miku and I encountered our next boss, the Eduardo UFO. The battle began with Monitor's HP bananas being taken away from her almost immediately. And yes, he eventually did the same thing to more of my party members, but aside from that, I don't really know what else to say about this fight. After destroying both the assistant mecha goblins, this battle was really straightforward. The UFO itself did not give me much trouble, aside from, well, this. After winning the battle, me and Sebtu both gain a level each, and Eduardo points us to the skyscraper, leading into day 150, where I must return to the Traveler's Hub once more, and take on more missions, which will lead me to the jewels required to opening up the skyscraper. The first mission I decided to take opened up the underground labyrinth next door, which has more than one area I can potentially investigate, and only one of them has the jewel I am looking for. Oh, and FYI, the jewel is in neither of these spots, the spot that it's in is the only one that's currently off screen. After I beat the first level, the path splits into three, and on day 151, I took the top path, since, as I just said, neither the left or the right path will lead me to the first jewel that I am looking for. A few more quick and easy battles later, I reached the inn, and then on day 152, I dug up the first of the four jewels, meaning on day 153, it was time to head back to the Traveler's Hub to tackle another mission. The next mission I decided to tackle came from Kirby the Cat, who wants my help to find their lost dog, which has one of the jewels that I am looking for. Accepting this quest opened up the Eerie Road, and the first stage here introduces me to the Ghost Mallet enemies, which not only hit hard, but can also inflict the crying status condition on party members. Despite how much damage these guys can do to each member of my team, I didn't have much trouble with them here, and at the end of the level, Eshot Bag and Crystal both gained a level each. Day 154 had only one battle against a pair of lizardmen, right at the very end of the stage, so not much to say here. Day 155 on the other hand was full of battles throughout the entirety of the stage. The final battle helped me reach 750 rescues, scoring me some more HP sprinkles at the end of the stage, and once again, improving the safe spot a little bit more. I make my way out of the castle area at the start of day 156, and after Kirby's face suddenly gets wiped off during the level, I encounter the Kirby Wolf of the Wisp, which actually did put up quite a bit of a challenging fight, not only doing big chunks of damage to each of my party members, but can also heal itself by quite a decent amount every now and then. I feel like if I didn't bring Cynthia with me to this boss fight, I would have likely lost this battle. Just look at the damage my character does with Double Slash when the boss's guard is up, and here it is again when the boss's guard is down. Quite the difference, isn't it? Luckily, I did get the chance to use a horseplay attack midway through the battle, dealing 500 damage to the boss, and after that, I healed my team back up with the rest of my sprinkles, and that was enough to help me finish off the boss. Then after being given the second jewel from Kirby, I found out at the end of the stage that I have consumed up to 30 MP candies throughout the adventure, once again, improving their effect even further. The next mission I decided to take opened up the sterile plant back on Nimbus, so on day 157, I headed back up to the sky, and of course, our first day back here was pretty uneventful. Gained a level after the first battle in the stage, which was then followed by me scoring three more game tickets from a chest, and after our second battle, Blaze grew a level, and we reached the inn. Day 158 started with us entering the sterile plant, where the Quizmaster was once again waiting for me, and this time, he wanted to test my general knowledge. Let's not talk about this in the comment section, please. My first battle in the stage was against a newly introduced Metal Scorpion, which, if you remember the scary scorpions from the first video, these guys are essentially the same deal as them, having a 10% chance each turn to kill someone on my team in just one hit. That thankfully didn't happen during this battle, but at the start of our very next battle, however, 
BAM! Cynthia's dead. Like that. No one on my team even got a chance to attack yet. So I proceeded to use my life sprinkle on Cynthia, followed by a hype sprinkle on myself to hopefully kill both the scary scorpions in one hit. Which, unfortunately didn't go as planned, but thankfully, Crystal used her regal dance and both male scorpions began to dance, leaving them vulnerable. And after killing the second scorpion, we finished the rest of the enemies with ease, and Cynthia grew to level 17. Day 159 took us to the very end of the sterile plant, meaning it is now time for us to battle the next boss, Robo Shrek. And this boss fight now grants us access to the shield sprinkles, which, as God here states, can be pretty helpful when the feed enemies attack us. Yeah, these would have been pretty nice to have earlier, especially back in the castle where, you know, one fiend is just straight up unavoidable. But in the case of this boss, where he could essentially lock onto two of my party members before firing off a really strong attack, what I like to do is use a shield sprinkle on just one of them, and put my other party member being targeted inside the safe spot, using up only one of my shield sprinkles instead of two. But that's essentially the whole gist of this fight. As long as you don't let the boss hit anyone on your team with a charge attack, you should be fine all around. Winning that battle gets us the third skyscraper duel, meaning on day 160, it is time to head back to the Travelers Hub for possibly the last time on this journey to begin our next mission to find the last jewel that we are looking for. There's nothing really to say about the first day in Gontu Cave since it began with the team once again being split into two, which it has been a while since that happened, so I was kind of expecting it to happen again eventually. Day 161 consisted of my half of the team fighting a few Ice Maidens, which helped grow to level 17 and learn the move Absorb. On day 162, next. Day 163 had the second half of the team battling a couple of penguins and snowmen. After taking care of them, I scored some additional grub from a chest and reached the inn. Both halves of the team regrouped on day 164, and then on day 165, I made it to the end of the cave and confronted the Ice Queen boss, which was surprisingly a pretty challenging battle. And near the end of it, three out of four of my team members almost got knocked out by a single attack from the boss. And I already used my life sprinkle at this point in the battle because earlier on, I didn't react fast enough to heal Eshop bag back up, leading to him getting knocked out. But the good news is, we were just given shield sprinkles not long ago. So after applying each member of my team with a shield each, I finished off the Ice Queen, and at long last, I have acquired the last jewel I need to open up the Skyscraper. Which, by the way, the following cutscene counts as another day passed, since it takes place during the night, and when we open the door, it's back to daytime. So on day 167, we finally make our way into the Skyscraper, and as always, when entering a new area, I encounter some more new foes, the first being the Orochi, which just like the Ice Queen boss I just fought, has an attack which can inflict damage on all of my party members, which thankfully didn't happen during this battle. And despite how often the Fire Demons in the following battle tried making my team cower in fear, it just didn't work, giving us another easy win, and at the end of the stage, Seb2 grew to level 17, and I grew to level 20. Day 168 may have only had one battle throughout the entirety of the level, but holy crap, why the heck are these crystals so strong and tanky? After I killed both of the purple crystals, I took down both the regular crystals with some hyper sprinkles because the amount of damage we did to these enemies without them was just pitiful. Baldi then grew to level 17, and I ended the stage by grabbing some additional loot from a couple of chests. And then, on day 169, I encountered the first of the many bosses we are expected to run into during the climb. Dr. Eggman, the Phantom of Evil. Or in simpler words, the Dark Lord, but the entire fight is just phase one. So, I should have a much easier time fighting this boss compared to when I fought the Dark Lord. Which, yes, that certainly was the case here. The nightmares that the boss inflicted on my team were very easy to manage. He didn't hit as hard as the crystals I fought the day prior, and Cynthia kept lowering his defenses throughout the battle, which were all contributing factors that helped me beat this boss without much difficulty. Rescuing the ex-Dark Lord, and allowing him to travel alongside us. While he may do close to no damage, if we run out of HP bananas during a level, this guy can thankfully supply my team with some more during battles. On day 170, the team was once again split in half by a rockfall, for presumably the last time throughout this adventure. So on day 171, the first half of the team began making their way up to the higher floors of the skyscraper to regroup with the rest of the team. Nothing noteworthy to point out during our battles in this stage, but I did get a free cake for this interaction, because it was apparently Baldi's birthday. A surprisingly wholesome moment during the climax of this challenge. Day 172 was more of the same. The last battle in the stage got me to 800 rescues, so after reaching the inn, I was given another upgrade to both my HP and MP sprinkles. 20 more sprinkles for each. Then after destroying a group of UFOs at the start of day 173, 
I came face to face with the next pair of bosses that I had to take on, the Strong Derp Golem and the Gold General Derp. I decided to target the Golem first, mainly because I believed he would be the easiest enemy to take down first, which, while that was true, watch what he gets killed by. Yeah, that happened. We unfortunately didn't kill the general the same way, but regardless, that's another boss down. And then on day 174, we once again transition over to the other half of the team. Day 175 started out pretty easy, but the following battle after the first one lasted quite a while. About five and a half minutes to be exact. I was up against a pair of wizened owls and the newly introduced Medusa enemies, which either made my team more vulnerable or just turned one of my party members into stone. Since Zeb2 was my only character in this battle who could hit every enemy with just his standard attack, I gave him a hyper sprinkle whenever I could to try and give myself an easier time during this battle, but the enemies could still cancel it out anyway with the statuses they could inflict, meaning I would then have to keep Zeb2 in the safe spot for one turn before I could give him another hyper sprinkle. And at the very end of the battle, when Seb2 and Monita were both feeling astray, I saw the new skill pop up appear on screen, and Monita was using the skill Calm for the first time. Kinda surprised it took until this point for Monita to use that move, since the cleric learns Calm at only level 4. Monita, Cynthia, and Crystal all gained a level from that battle, and then we reached the end. Day 176 presented me with another challenging battle midway through the stage, which thankfully did not give me as much trouble as the last one did. This fight got both Seb2 and up to level 18, and we reached the inn after one more easy battle. Then came day 177, where in the next stage, another boss battle awaits us, Pharaoh Tinky Winky 2. And if you remember the original Pharaoh boss from the first video, this fight is essentially the same deal as that one. If the boss casts a curse on one of your party members, just put that me in the safe spot until the curse wears off. And if your team can help heal each other throughout the battle, then you should be fine all around. Another boss down, one more to go. Both halves regrouped on day 178, and then on day 179, I once again met up with Explorer Steve, who tells me about a secret treasure hoard hidden somewhere inside the skyscraper, which A, I'm not going to be going after anyway, and B, how the f did you even get in here? The door was locked tight before we even got the gems to open it, so you've got a bit of explaining here to do, Steve. On day 180, I had to take a bit of a detour, since the path to continue up the skyscraper was not accessible yet. I took care of several bombs and pop enemies before reaching a lever at the end of the stage, which opened up the path required for me to progress further up the tower. But before I entered the next level, I started off day 181 by winning a silver frying pan for the eShot bag on the roulette wheel. And after winning another one and finding out how much they sell for, I proceeded to use all of my game tickets once again. And I went from 2,000 gold to 43,000. And believe it or not, I then got an additional 20,000 gold added onto that, because there was a wretch snurp just waiting for us on the map. It was a very difficult fight however, but the payoff from it was well worth it. Especially at this point in the challenge, now that I'm essentially at the home stretch of the main story. I'm going to need every weapon and armor upgrade I can get from this point forward. As for the stage itself, first off, how did you also get in here? And second, the last boss of the skyscraper, the Monica and Yuri poles, and the red Natsuki frog because that's not red, that's obviously pink, but now I'm just being nitpicky. If you want to see me nitpick this game in its entirety, here's the video on screen to check out after this one. But anyway, throughout the beginning of this fight, I merely decided to go with attacks that always hit every enemy on the field, either being my spin slash attack or Rabidash's snort ability whenever he decided to step in, which happened quite frequently actually. I unfortunately had to use my life sprinkle pretty early on in the battle because the frog charged up its bad breath attack, and again, I did not react quick enough, which allowed the boss to attack all my party members before I could even get a chance to heal Seb2 back up. Hooray for repeated mistakes! After I took down the first tadpole, I decided to use a hyper sprinkle on myself to help me take down the second one quickly, because at this point, I was beginning to run low on HP sprinkles, and even though Eggman can infinitely supply my team with HP bananas, he can only do that once per turn, and for only one party member. So I still felt like I needed to end this quickly, before I'm completely out of ways to heal myself. This helped me take down the second tadpole, and then I proceeded to use another hyper sprinkle to wipe out the Natsuki frog for good, meaning that is all of the skyscraper bosses now done, and our next stop is the final boss in Otherworld. Day 182 consisted of only one battle against 8 pop enemies, but this was enough to get me to 850 rescues, once again scoring me some more HP sprinkles at the end of the stage, 
And since at this point, I was feeling pretty confident that I would get to the final boss with the amount of time I had left in the challenge, I felt like I was going to need all the sprinkles I could get before I reached the Darker Lord. Day 183 started with me winning a few more game tickets from the Quizmaster. And while Day 182 only had one easy battle for me to win, Day 183 had four battles, with the last battle on the stage being the most obnoxious one, because this battle consisted of three Orochis, which all have an explosion attack that does a decent chunk of damage to everyone on my team. I mainly relied on using Hyper Sprinkles on Seb Toot and Rapidash's Gnaw Attack whenever I got the chance to use him to get through this battle. And thankfully, that will be the last time I see those enemies, because on day 184, I reached the top of the skyscraper and entered the gateway, leading to the final area of the main story, Otherworld. The battles I took on throughout the day helped me reach level 22 and learn the move Dark Eye Slash. Day 185 was more of the same, I fought some more meteorites and space goblins, and throughout the day, e Bag and Blaze both grew to level 19. Day 186 introduced the alien enemies to me, which have the ability to make a party member become old, making their attacks weaker. Which, side note, during my battles against these aliens throughout the day, the only characters they inflicted the old condition on were Crystal and Monita, and in terms of appearance, they looked no different to how they looked when they didn't get hit with the old condition, which I personally thought was kind of funny. And then, at long last, on day 187, the next level was our final battle against our foe and adversary, Darker Lord Sayori. So after making my final purchases for the team and giving everyone their last share of food for this adventure, it was time to head into the level and begin the final battle. The team I used to battle the left hand consisted of Baldi and Jaden. I only had to put me in the safe spot twice during this battle, but aside from that, the left hand was a piece of cake. I used Seb2, Eshop, Bag, and Blaze to take on the right hand, with Blaze being my main damage dealer, and the character I would mainly use my shield sprinkles on during this phase of the battle. The only time I chose to put Blaze in the safe spot was when I wanted to recover some of her MP, because I wanted to save all my HP and MP sprinkles for when I fight the body. But as soon as I took Blaze out of the safe spot, during that turn, the right hand got rid of Eshop Bag's shield, which I forgot to reapply since he was still being targeted. This resulted in Eshop Bag taking a very big hit and because I was not expecting what was coming next, Eshop Bag got attacked a second time in a row, killing him. And since I also wanted to save my life sprinkle for the final phase of the battle, I figured the best thing I could do from this point forward was give Blaze a hyper sprinkle and have her finish off the right hand as quickly as possible. This idea was thankfully successful, meaning all that was left was Sayori, the Darkest Lord, and my final team of myself, Monita, Cynthia, and Crystal. Since horseplay was the first attack I decided to go for, Cynthia immediately inflicted my character with the Hyper Effect, which was great, because this allowed me to take down the first pair of coins instantly. Since Crystal did a lot of damage to the said 2 coin, I finished that one off with a Spin Slash, which also allowed me to do some additional chip damage onto the Baldy coin. Cynthia then proceeded to finish off the Baldy coin with a Punishing Pitchfork, followed by Rapidash, incinerating the Ooh. coin, and Crystal taking down the Jaden coin. Once the second phase of the battle began, I immediately clicked on the sprinkles because this attack drops everyone down to 1 HP, no matter how much health each party member has, and it can also bypass shields. But, fun fact, this technically means if you have a me that's already on 1 HP when the Darkest Lord uses this attack, they will literally take 0 damage, which is like the only instance of that ever occurring in this game. Since I had Monita in the safe spot during this turn, she thankfully didn't take any damage herself. I then proceeded to use all my HP sprinkles on my other three party members, and since literally no one on my team had a single HP banana on them, that meant my only accessible way to heal now was with Monita's supportive skills. I still had my life sprinkle at the ready, just in case Monita got knocked out, because if I end up using my life sprinkle on someone else and then Monita gets knocked out not long later, I could potentially lose the battle and have to do the entire battle all over again, starting with the left hand. Since Cynthia lowered Sayori's defense earlier and I still had Hyper Sprinkles left over, I proceeded to give one to my character, which helped out a lot. But then, Sayori once again used another big bang attack, dropping both Cynthia and me down to 1 HP, and then proceeded to kill my character with the following attack. Since the boss was now just one hit away from being defeated, I just proceeded to use the Life Sprinkle myself, and then, one Dark Eye Slash later, that was it. We won the final battle and rescued our Lord and Savior. Great Sage Sayori. And for those wondering, yes, I did give the Dark Curse a face. The adventure may now be done and dusted, but let's see how much more we can get done with the remaining days I have left for the challenge.
Day 188 started with a group of requests becoming available at the Traveler's Hub, and half of my team decided to go over to the newly built villa, which, you know what? Fine. They can stay there. These last 6 in-game months have been a really hectic time in their lives, so they deserve a nice relaxing break. Rest well, comrades. Leave the rest to us. The first request I took on took me back to Peculiar, where I entered a spooky manor with the goal being to drive out the scary ghost hiding within the building. I encountered a couple groups of skeletons within the first stage of the manor, and because it has been quite a while since I last saw these guys, they were essentially no threat to anyone on my team. I started off day 189 by opening a couple of chests, both containing pretty good selections of grub, before encountering a pair of ghost mallets, who, just like the skeletons, we've not seen in a while, so these guys were also not that much of a challenge to battle. Then on day 190, I reached the end of the manor and confronted the pop-up puppet boss, which has the ability of being able to control a party member's body after revealing the marionette underneath its cloak, which it didn't get the chance to use on anyone throughout this entire fight. Dark Eye Slash made this boss an absolute walk in the park. Completing this quest gives me the Bat Charm, unlocking the Vampire Job class. There is still one more unlockable job that can only be accessed after finding a certain charm, but spoiler alert, I did not get it. Day 191 started with me once again, returning to the Traveler's Hub, where I decided to take on another easy quest. Although in this case, I would say the quest I chose to tackle was a bit too easy, because the first level literally had no enemies for me to fight. Just a key at the end of the stage, which I immediately used to open the door, leading to the boss on the following day. And then one horseplay attack later, this boss fight was my 900th rescue of the entire journey, which means, yet again, more HP and MP sprinkles at the end of the stage. And the mayor thanks us for taking care of the boss, and rewards me with three cheesecakes. The next task I decided to take on was from Natsuki, the youngest Feb Fairy, who was looking for a sweet treat hidden somewhere in... Cargaton? That's the last place I'd expect to find something as sweet as dessert, but okay, I guess that's where we're going. I battled a couple of clever imps at the beginning of the stage, and after winning the battle, I did not encounter any more enemies to fight throughout the rest of the stage, so I had a feeling that this was going to be another easy and straightforward quest. Yeah, we shall see about that. Day 194 was a pretty uneventful day. I fought a couple of lizardmen, and that was really it and day 195 was when I realised I got a bit too overconfident, since the deadly demons here not only took hits from my team very well, but they also hit incredibly hard. The good news though was Manita was able to wipe out one of the deadly demons instantly with righteous anger, but the bad news was she then got taken down immediately in just one hit, forcing me to use my life sprinkle on her and having to rely on these things again to take down the remaining two demons. Thankfully, Natsuki's dancing arrow attack can make the enemy she targets dance for a single turn leaving them vulnerable. So after Natsuki helped us take down the second demon, we managed to beat the third and final one with close to no issues. Completing this task rewards me with some devil's food cake, and then on day 196, I took on my final request I had waited for me in the Traveler's Hub, which led me to Galado's Isle. Upon arriving, I met up with a scholar who warned me ahead of time that the enemies on the island are very strong. Thanks for the heads up, buddy. After getting a bit overconfident from the last quest I chose to tackle, this warning was 100% warranted, because the puffer poles I encountered in the following level were actually quite strong. If they had more HP though, I would have probably said that this level was a pain to get through, but thankfully, that's not the case. Day 197 started with a battle against a lion snail, who was just mainly delaying the inevitable. This battle helped Money to reach level 21, allowing her to learn the move Giga Cure which I figured I was going to need for whatever the boss of this quest was going to be. No more battles occurred throughout the rest of the day, so on to day 198, which had me battling three more lion snails midway through the level, which were all pretty easy to take care of, thanks to Rapidash's snort attack. This battle helped Seb2 grow to level 21 and learn the move way out of tune. And then on day 199, I reached my destination for this quest, meaning it was time to take on the last boss of the challenge, Alien John which, just like the aliens I fought back in Otherworld, can inflict the old status condition on my party members. And this boss gets to attack my team a maximum of three times per turn. And after seeing how much damage he was inflicting on each of my party members, I immediately decided to begin using my hyper sprinkles on my character in order to do a lot of damage quickly. And as soon as one wore off, I'd use another one instantly. And despite that, this battle still lasted quite a while. Partly because of the fact the hyper effect got cancelled out a couple of times because the alien fired his laser at my character. But aside from that, I was able to pull through and win the battle, completing the quest. 
I decided for day 200 to take on the first level in New Lumos' first district, since, well, this is essentially the only day I'll get to visit this location during this challenge, which, side note, this place has the best map theme in the entire game. No contest. My first battle in the stage was against a couple of fossils and a troll. The fossils were a breeze to destroy, and while the troll was pretty tanky and strong, it wasn't too annoying to fight against, considering I'm only fighting one here instead of three. And the final battle in this entire challenge consisted of three more easy to destroy fossils and a retroputer, which did knock out Monita towards the end of the fight, but my character clapped back in rage, winning the battle and reaching the inn for the last time in this adventure. So after 200 in-game days, Let's recap what I have managed to accomplish throughout this entire playthrough. I have completed the main story, I have acquired the bat charm, I have rescued a grand total of 938 faces, I have battled a total of 157 different monsters, and acquired 125 different kinds of grub. And as for medals, I was surprised to see I only got one third of all of them during this adventure. But to be fair, quite a decent number of these medals require a lot of grinding in the post game to complete. So, yeah. I don't really have much else to say, and come on, this video is long enough already. If you enjoyed this video and want to see me attempt more challenges like this, be sure to click the subscribe button so you do not miss out on what's to come. And until next time fellow pretzels, have a nice day. Bye!